Greetings with lovers everywhere. I'm E-Train and welcome to E-Train Talks. And today I am so incredibly thrilled to introduce you to, I guess, a legend in the kindness world. She's internationally oh, recognized for being an activist for education, refugees, and the rights of girls and women. She is a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, the first with official refugee status. She was named one of Glamour Magazine's 2017 Women of the Year, as well as one of Teen Vogue's 21 Under 21, and she's a te she hosted a TEDx Teen Talk. If that's not enough, she has written a memoir titled Muzum, A Syrian <laughs> Refugee Speaks Out. Everybody, I am so incredibly excited to welcome kindness champion Muzun Al-Melehan to e -Train Talks. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, first of all, thank you so much indeed for the very kind introduction. This means a lot to me and really, really honored to be with you today and to talk to E-Train Talks. Uh, it is such a, um, a pleasure and I'm really excited to start. So thanks a lot indeed. Well, thank you. And before we get started with some of the questions, would you mind sharing a bit about your background and what brought you to your role as UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador? Yes, of course. So before becoming a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador, uh, I was living as a refugee in Jordan uh, for over three years. And uh, during my time in refugee camps, I was just advocating for uh, education for every child to access learning and to have a quality education, and also for every and each person to believe in their voices and to listen to, to their ideas and also also to follow their dreams and to achieve their goals no matter what. I know the challenges were so many in the camp, but uh, I wanted every child to never give up and to fight for what they believe in. So basically, uh, I started to raise my voice and to talk um, to the people in the camp to ask them to learn if there is an opportunity to learn and also to believe in education as um, the greatest um, uh, means we can use to go and rebuild our countries in the future because Syria and every country that suffers from a conflict or suffers from any challenge uh, you know, no matter what, we can solve it by education. And once we have educated generation, we can really contribute in rebuilding our countries and uh, making our countries, um, you know, uh, peaceful again. So that's how I started. And then when I resettled with my family in the United Kingdom, um, I continued to uh, advocate and fight for uh, ch children to get their right to education not only Syrians, but for every child who are voiceless and they uh, they are denied from their rights, basically. So here in the UK, I continue to share my story and to uh, encourage uh, world leaders and uh, the international community to, to do something for every uh, child in the camp or any child who lives in danger or any child who is in need of education. So in 2017, UNICEF decided to appoint me as their youngest and fairest person who holds the refugee status to become um, a goodwill ambassador. So yes, that's how it all started. Well, I love the term that you use, like give a voice to the voiceless, and you're certainly doing that and a lot more. So oh, thank you. before we get I mean, we've already kind of started, I guess, but this is kind mm -hmm. of uh, before the book, a bit of a question. So mm -hmm. is there, I know there are a lot of messages that you try to spread through your work, but is there one message in particular for all the kids out there who want to make a difference in the world like you? Is there one message you would give them? Just I want uh, them to know uh, what they do is so valuable and uh, they must uh, believe in it and to believe in themselves and never underestimate what they do because one day uh, what they are doing uh, it will make a huge difference and will make an impact but 
they just they need to believe in it and uh, don't listen to the negativity around them and don't make any challenge to defeat them, even though they have to defeat the challenges and to be stronger than them. So just keep going, never give up and believe, keep believing in yourself because these elements, uh, they might seem natural or maybe so normal, but they are the strongest things uh, we have in life because uh, if we don't believe in what we do no one is gonna believe in what we do so we have to have the positive voice inside us and to listen to what we want to do and to the difference that we really want to make in our communities so just listen to your hearts and to your minds and to your ideas and keep going no matter what, because one day you will make a difference and what you do, uh, there will be someone and out there will need it because um, it can change their lives one day. So just keep doing what you are doing and never listen to the challenges around you. Well, your proof that believing in yourself, believing that you can and will make a difference in the world your proof that that really is the truth because you were in a refugee camp. It seemed like all the odds were stacked against you, but you kept fighting for what you believed in and for the future of not just you, but for all the other girls and kids in the refugee camp. So what you did and what you're continuing to do is so admirable. Oh, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Thanks indeed. Well, my next question for you is... A bit, I mean, I admire so much about you, but another thing oh. that I really admire that I read in your story is how much your family values education and really emphasizes the importance of studying and growing your mind. And it's the message that you now advocate with others and to others, and it's the message that has helped inspire so many young women and girls to pursue learning and expanding their knowledge. So why do you think your family really, I guess, trusted and bestowed, I guess, upon you, like these values that education is truly like the foundation of everything in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such a great question. So thank you so much for highlighting that. For me personally, I feel so lucky that uh, my family really loves education and also they always encourage me to uh, to, to learn and no matter what and to keep learning and also they encourage me to encourage others to, to believe in education as an activist. So this is something sometimes we don't find it a lot in our communities, which makes me so proud of my family and uh, that all of them, they work in the field of education, which is something I'm so passionate about. So um, the exact, uh, the exact uh, answer, you know, and how uh, and why only my family felt education it is not easy to answer because i really don't know the main reason but i could mention uh, the role my uh, granddad uh, has played uh, in making my family such an educated family because uh, he wasn't educated himself but he really knew the importance of learning and he was encouraging uh, his kids either the boys and the girls both of them to be educated and to finish their studies because uh, not many in our society really at that time believed especially uh, in the importance of education for girls. So my dad, granddad, basically, he was the one who encouraging them to, to be educated. And also my grandma, she was basically um, a person who values education so much and she had such uh, a great uh, impact on my dad and also my uncles and my aunties uh, to, to be educated. They all uh, love education and they know it is uh, the right way to use uh, in order to, to do something to our communities and to contribute in a positive way uh, in our societies and also to support ourselves because if I'm not educated person, I will face so many challenges. And uh, for me personally, when I was a child, I saw the, um, uh, you know, the role and the great impact my family had on in their society because they were teaching people who become engineers, doctors, uh, lawyers. 
So when I saw how important education is in my family, I knew uh, I cannot live without being educated person and I cannot live without getting my education. So that was one of the main things that uh, has inspired me to reject losing my right to be educated and also rejecting the fact seeing other children losing their right to go to school as well. So I wanted not only Muzun to be educated, but I wanted every child everywhere. And until now, I always continue to do what I'm doing to see all children can access education because it is a fundamental human right. It is not a privilege that we provide to children. My next question for you is, well, when your advocacy journey began, you were only 14 years old, you were away mm -hmm. from home in a refugee camp in Jordan, and you took it upon yourself to go door to door, informing and trying to change the minds of people, getting them excited about education for their kids, the next generation. Were you ever, I guess, scared or worried that you weren't really making a difference at all? No, I have never thought I uh, cannot make a difference because I always believed in my voice and I always believed uh, in what I was doing. I knew it is something really uh, vital and critical for my society and especially for Syrian people. They are very educated uh, people, so I didn't want them just because we have become refugees and just because we had a war and uh, suffered in our lives to lose hope. Even the opposite, we have to be stronger in these circumstances. I know it is not easy to, to become a refugee. It is not easy to flee your homeland. It is not easy to live in the conflict. All these things can easily make you give up. But I know the Syrian people were strong enough to face the challenges and they can defeat these uh, tough circumstances. So I was shocked when I saw many people started to be hopeless. And um, I believe that uh, if I encourage them and as a person who was a refugee like them and was living in refugee camps, uh, living the, in similar uh, conditions and similar circumstances, can uh, uh, can make a difference. So I believed in that. I have never been scared to express myself and also to explain the importance of education and to convey the message about going to school. So this is uh, always, um, you know, was my strength in life. I always uh, believed in what I uh, do and what I did uh, because we need to believe inside and in what we do in life. And if we empowered inside anything uh, like, you know, outside that is, uh, tries to stop us, you know, uh, you know, will never happen because we have uh, our uh, strong determination and the strong will, which will help us to face any challenge that could come uh, in front of us and uh, we can continue our way no matter what. Well, I love that answer so much. And thank you. I'm also curious to know a bit about the process of writing a memoir. So to start, how did you get in contact with your co-author, Wendy Perlman? Did you know each other before you kind of came up with the idea to write about your life? No, unfortunately, I didn't know Wendy before writing uh, my book because uh, we knew each other when we started the process of writing the book. Uh, so the publisher reached out to Wendy and then we started to write the book, which was uh, such a huge honor, you know, to work with her. She had uh, a great uh, knowledge about the, my region in the Middle East and especially what has happened in Syria. So she knew already all these kinds of things, which has made it easier for me to, to work with Wendy. And um, she was such an amazing writer, had many great ideas. So so we enjoyed writing the book together, which was so interesting, especially when the, uh, you know, Arabic is not her first language, but also she knows Arabic. So it was something uh, I loved it as well. So if I use a term, which, you know, I don't need sometimes to define it, because even if you translate it into English, sometimes that doesn't give the exact meaning. So when you mention it to Wendy, like just the Arabic word, it was easy, you know, because she gets that and she knows what I'm talking about, especially if there is a specific like terms related to the war in Syria or 
you know, re related to the country or to the region. So she has already knew about it, which was really helpful. Uh, but yeah, we just knew each other after writing the book. So before that, we didn't know each other. Well, another question that I have is, mm -hmm. how do you believe education can empower young girls and or women and contribute to positive change in con conflict affected regions? Yeah, education uh, is important everywhere at any time, even if it is uh, in a war zone country or in a country that lives in peace. It is, to be honest, uh, important to all of us because uh, without knowledge, we cannot really improve and we cannot develop in any way in life. So we need education in every aspect of life. But when it comes to countries that are suffering, such as Syria, uh, we need it even more because the country is already suffering. So if we lose the integral part, which is education, then it is going to be a huge disaster and even uh, a longer term uh, challenges uh, and also a, a slow a process to uh, repel the country itself. So we need um, educated people who have knowledge, who have expertise, who know things uh, and they know how how to repair things, if so to speak. They uh, they know how to make a country a better place again uh, because of the knowledge they have, the, the learning they had in life. So, um, and also the opportunity they had to follow their dreams and to uh, implement their skills. Because sometimes uh, if those people, even if they are so smart and they don't have opportunities, uh, then they cannot really use their um, intelligence and skills in the right way and they cannot really improve it. So if we don't provide them with the right opportunities and uh, we didn't provide them with the opportunity to learn and to be educated, uh, to be honest, if we have one disaster, will we have many disasters? So it is really important for um, children, especially in conflict uh, places, to, to be uh, educated and to give them the opportunity to have a quality education because those uh, children and that generation can contribute positively in uh, making that country uh, a bright uh, country again and to be uh, a bright future. So uh, uh, when we have uh, all these opportunities and uh, the right support, we have stronger countries and we can uh, use the generation to contribute in a positive way in, uh, in the rebuilding process and also recovering from any conflict. But if we don't educate children and um, you know build a strong generation, it will be really tough to uh, solve any problem and especially to solve the conflict. And the, those children and that can country will rely on others all the time in doing anything but once they are empowered they will be in need of no one while they are uh, helping and supporting their own countries in the muzun a syrian refugee speaks out you recollected that you were called the malala of syria but while at the it may have been kind of considered an honor it was also kind of a wake up call for you in a sense, because you did not want to be known as the Mawala of Syria. You wanted to be known as Muzun of the world in a sense. You wanted you wanted to kind of be you and not be defined by, I guess, maybe the fact that you're doing something similar to another activist. So do you think that you really achieved your goal that you are Muzun, you are who you are? Uh, to be honest, you know, uh, I really admire Malala so much and we are very good friends. I really love what Malala has been doing. She uh, has been uh, doing great things for education and for children, which is something I really appreciate so much. And of course, we are really good friends. So I like Malala so much and uh, I admire what she's doing and what she keeps doing for the world. And having any and such Malala of Syria, it is something maybe makes me really proud, you know, to be named uh, such as a person like Malala, who's so uh, inspiring and has doing unique things for the world, especially at such a young age. 
but as you mentioned, you know, everyone has their own story and their own activism and, um, you know, uh, different challenges and they have gone through different things. So, um, you know, at the end, it is me, my story, my name. So, of course, you know, having that name, I have, of course, no problem with that. And something makes me so proud. But I am also Muzoon with my own and unique story as well and my unique things that I'm doing in life. So, um, you know, even when I started, I was known as Muzoon and they achieved, you know, uh, my name and my story from the beginning, from the early stages when I did my activism work. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm known by both things. You know, some media sometimes refers to me as the Malala of Syria, which is, you know, something uh, I'm happy about. And also being Muzun, which is also, I'm very known by my name and everyone, you know, knows who's Muzun and who's Muzun's story and from where Muzun has come from and why she has started her own things. So, you know, uh, and even my goal not to be known, uh, my goal is to really fight for the right of education and to make a difference in the lives of others. So when I started my advocacy work, I really didn't know I will become who I am right now. I, of course, you know, I always um, believed in my voice and they believed in what I was doing. But to be a voice for millions around the world, of course, not something I thought about or it wasn't something planned you know i really my goal no matter what the name is to be uh, to have a message and this message to be delivered uh, to the world leaders and uh, change makers uh, and policy makers to anyone who really can make a difference in the lives of children and uh, also to make awareness about what children are uh, going through in many countries and also what refugees are uh, suffering from. So my story is now doesn't only represent Muzun herself, it represents millions around the world who are voiceless and uh, unfortunately they don't have opportunity to express their challenges and to talk about their needs. So having uh, myself and having my platform as an uh, activist and as a goodwill ambassador to UNICEF, I feel I have a huge responsibility. It is not uh, any longer about me uh, alone. Uh, it is about every person who really needs someone to listen to their challenges and to do something for them on the ground. So, uh, yeah, so I, Muzun is known who's Muzun and her story is known and also the things she fights for. My next question for you is what's next for your journey with UNICEF as an ambassador for goodwill? Are there any new countries that you'll be visiting or projects that you're starting? Uh, well, you know, it, um, doing what I'm doing with UNICEF, like uh, we are still in this journey together. Uh, and yes, of course, there are many countries I'm looking forward to visit and to highlight their challenges and also to deliver their messages to the world. So, uh, of course, you know, I will uh, keep uh, traveling the world and speaking out and talking about the importance of education and also it changing the circumstances of his children. So I hope uh, what I do will uh, always keep making a difference uh, in the lives of millions of the children around the world. And uh, yes, I will continue this journey and uh, hopefully I will be visiting um, new countries and discover uh, great uh, generations who are uh, amazing, you know, and they are very uh, smart people, but just they need more attention. So when wherever I go with UNICEF, uh, either in Africa or in the Middle East, I always meet with great children who are ready to make a difference, but they only lack opportunities and they lack uh, access to education and access to um, building their futures. So uh, I will never give up on them and uh, I will never give up on uh, raising their voices and talking about their challenges because they deserve our attention and uh, they deserve us to give them the right opportunities uh, and to keep fighting for them we don't need to forget them or their needs they uh, they are they are always in my mind and in what i do and it is not a privilege to provide them with uh, what they need it is a duty on all of us uh, to go there and to change their circumstances on the ground 
uh, because sometimes we take so many things for granted. Uh, like if I go to uni, uh, that's you know something I can go and at any time. If I go to school, I have teachers, I have good infrastructure. All these kind of things we take them for granted, but um, there are millions out there. They don't have them, so it is really important to keep uh, spreading awareness and to keep fighting uh, to uh, give those children what they need. When did the idea come to write your own memoir, Muzun, a Syrian refugee speaks out? And how did you mm -hmm. go about writing it? Yeah, so basically, um, I always really wanted to write a book, of course, you know, because many things I really wanted it to be shared. Uh, with uh, children especially and with young people because you know um, if you go through challenges and then defeat them and uh, you see you uh, like had a positive outcome it is really important to be shared but to be honest uh, it didn't start from me personally you know to start the whole idea uh, there is a person uh, contacted me uh, they heard me speaking in uh, an event and then they reached out and they talked about the idea to start writing the book if I'm interested. So yeah, we agreed and then we started to think about it. And then we were connected with um, the publisher. And then of course I met Wendy and uh, it took a while, of course, things were delayed because of COVID as you know, uh, we didn't uh, really um, publish the book during that time. Uh, so uh, it was a bit delayed, but eventually we are here. The book is out and uh, really excited now. Uh, people can read my mom more and, you know, can really uh, hopefully learn uh, uh, from it. And uh, I hope it inspired uh, them to, to have, uh, you know, a good and successful life. Well, my next question for you is a bit more, a bit deeper into what can young people really do to support your efforts or contribute like with their own projects to improving improve education for refugees and kids all over the world who don't have access to schools or universities or even books so what can we do to spark change like you are I guess it all starts from small actions. We really don't need to start with big things. You know, sometimes why we give up? Because we think, oh, I need to donate a lot of money. I need to build so many schools. I need to do this and that. And just we think about the bigger picture and we really don't look to the tiny details that really can make a huge difference as well. Because we can start just by spreading awareness. For example, talking just to my classmates uh, about what other children are suffering from, uh, talk about their challenges and just raise their voices. Sometimes a small donations, you know, you can just start a fundraising, you know, with a small charity or a trusted organization. Uh, when we grow up, we can, you know, push our, um, MPs or, you know, member of governments in our local areas or councillors or whoever is in charge in where we live, we can uh, send them letters and push them, you know, to support um, the agenda can really help many children to reach education. We can advocate for organizations that really works for a good cause. We can, in our school, support the ones who are migrants, refugees, um, asylum seekers, or uh, the ones who sometimes may be neglected uh, and not welcomed in our societies. We can uh, try to contain them and welcome them and just show them we really love them and we welcome them. You know, sometimes if we keep rejecting the ones who come to our countries and we make them feel like they are not welcomed and we don't want them to be in our countries, uh, that can be really, um, such a negative, uh, you know, attitude we could use against uh, those uh, people who really cannot then, um, you know, contribute positively in those societies because they think, oh, no one wants me in this country. So I cannot really work harder on myself and they cannot really improve on a personal level uh, to contribute 
for myself and for others. So just if we have, you know, classmates from different countries, we try to just, you know, making them, um, you know, included and welcomed uh, and support them because sometimes, you know, they don't need anything from us except just showing them we really care about them. So, you know, simple actions can really make a huge difference because when I started personally, I just used my voice. I had, you know, nothing to be honest that was really big or something was really powerful, but my voice and they believed and the, uh, the thing that I have, it can make a difference. And that's how my voice now is making a difference. And that's why I'm so proud to have a book that talks about, uh, you know, using our voices and also speaking up. Because these elements, even though they seem so small, but their impact is so big. My final question for you is one that I've asked every person I've ever interviewed. So if you could meet any literary character, you could meet your favorite author or your favorite character in a book, mm -hmm. fictional or real. Who would it be and why? Uh, so for me personally, I really like Sherlock Holmes. It's uh, mm -hmm. such an interesting character for me personally. And the reason I really love it, because when I was young, I was watching a Japanese cartoon uh, called uh, Conan. And it was talking about, of course, you know, uh, similar to Sherlock Holmes and even it is based on it. And it was about all investigation and, you know, how to detect things and, you know, knowing the criminals and these kind of things. They were so interesting to me personally. And it was my favorite, um, you know, uh, children's show. And I was watching, you know, all the time. And uh, it was such an interesting one for me. So, yeah, that character stands out for me personally. I really like it. Well, thank you so very much for joining me today, uh, Mazun. This has been a day I will never forget and young adv advocates and activists will- Oh, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much for your time and for your great questions. They were so thoughtful and so lovely. Um, I really enjoyed talking to you today and I wish you all the best. So thanks a lot indeed. And uh, of course, you can always get in touch if you need me for anything. And they really enjoyed it. So thank you so much indeed. Well, thank you so much as well. And to everybody listening or watching or however you're viewing this interview, be sure to find yourself a copy of Muzun, A Syrian Refugee oh Speaks Out by Muzun al Khan and Wendy Perlman. You will not regret it. And I know you'll learn so much about activism as well as the Arab Spring. It's a topic that is some not really taught in schools in many places. So it's so important to have this information and move forward with knowledge and love. So once again, thank you so much for Zoom for joining me and everybody have a great rest of your day or evening or where, whenever and wherever you're watching oh, bye. this. Thank you. Keep Thanks, on working and activate advocating. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much.